It's important that you follow the proper procedure in preparing to start up a centrifugal pump. The preparation procedure has the same two aims as all our company's procedures, safety and efficiency. Check the area around the pump and see that it's clean and free of debris. Check the lubrication system, adding lubricants as needed. The lubrication system may include grease cups, grease fittings, automatic oilers, a force feed system, or other elements. Where a seal oil system is used, check to be sure it is properly lined up. For a pump that requires water cooling, open cooling water lines. And check to be sure water is flowing through the lines. In some cases, you can check by sight. In others, by feel. Warm up pumps in hot oil service by turning on steam tracing and by running warm oil through the pump. Hot oil introduced suddenly into a cold pump can cause severe damage from uneven expansion. Be sure to line up all piping connections correctly. Check all safety devices. Know the safety equipment for your pumps. Just for example, there may be a guard provided for the motor to pump coupling. If so, be sure it's in place. If a bleeder was open to drain the pump when it was shut down, close the bleeder before starting the pump. When you have taken all preparatory steps, proceed with the startup. Open the suction valve completely to allow liquid into the pump. Check by briefly opening a bleeder. If no liquid flows out, look for closed valves somewhere in the suction line. Prime the pump by bleeding off vapor. For a pump taking suction from a vessel under vacuum, special priming facilities and procedures are necessary. Open the discharge valve. How wide depends on the particular pump and driver. In some cases, it should be only about 10% open. In others, it may be wide open. As a basis for deciding how wide to open the discharge valve, consider this. A centrifugal pump draws least power from its driver when the discharge valve is completely closed. And most while it is starting up overcoming liquid inertia with the discharge valve completely open. Too great a power draw will damage an electric motor unless the motor has an overload switch. Then why not close the discharge valve until the pump is started up? No reason except that it's hard, sometimes just about impossible, to open a valve with pressure on it. Let's compromise. Open the discharge valve as wide as you need to. Start the driver. Slowly open discharge valve if you started the pump with the valve only partly open. Watch the discharge pressure gauge. Unusual fluctuations may indicate a suction line valve partly closed and resulting cavitation. Listen for any unusual noise. If you hear any, shut down the pump. Find and correct the trouble before restarting. Now turn to exercise 18 in workbook number 2. To shut down a centrifugal pump, Close the discharge valve to about the same point as you opened it before startup. Stop the driver. Finish closing the discharge valve.
close the suction valve. In some cases, liquid in the pump may expand or contract enough from temperature changes to damage the pump casing. In such a case, drain the pump or open a vent and leave it open. Shut off seal oil and cooling water or steam tracing. Your unit procedures and your own good judgment may change some items in these procedures. Some pumps must always be ready for immediate startup. They include pumps on automatic control and some spare pumps. A good rule for either case is don't do anything on shutdown that would interfere with the immediate startup. In some such cases, you just stop the driver, nothing more. Open workbook number two now and complete 